Hey friends, I'm here today with Taylor Mallory from Chicago. He is a singer, a producer, a loop artist, as well as an actor and a teacher, um, as well as some other things, which I'm sure we'll get into. Uh, how's it going, Taylor? I am doing well. How are you doing today, man? Doing great. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. I kind of, I stumbled onto your work because I was managing uh, TZ Helicon's Instagram a little bit a few months ago. And I was just blown away by how clean your loops are, how well you use the voice I've touched to. So I'm super excited to, to hear more about your process and wh who you are and, and what you do. Thank you, man. So uh, let's just dive into your background. What's, how did you get started with music and also just the arts, like acting and dance and all that? Yeah, so man, dude, I started performing when I was five years old. Uh, I'm from the church. My mom is a uh, evangelist. My dad is a deacon. So I kind of got my humble beginnings in the church. That's actually how I learned how to sing. Um, nice. And so I started out in this group called Boys Believers of Yahweh Sing and Believers of, oh, I'm sorry, Yahweh is another word for God. And we were like the, the gospel version of like Jackson 5. And <laughs> um, we were you know, we we had a lot of performances like in, in the local area, but we performed in California, Detroit, wow. um, our like major church conventions. So like that's where I really got my my start was in the church. Um, I guess to to like you know fast forward when I was thirteen at the, at, at this time CD burners weren't even like they didn't even exist. Yeah, and um, so my father had this idea of starting like this little small mowing company. So it was just me and my father and I was mowing lawns for like $20, which is now when I think about it, it's like, man, $20. Now with $20, you can't get too much. But anyway, yeah. um, I mowed um, enough lawns to buy a, a CD burner. Then I started to produce my own music. Um, my mother bought me a Casio keyboard, a Dr. Rhythm boss track four mixer. And that's when I started making music and production. Mm. And um, essentially just to fast forward, um, I turned 18, um, got accepted to Columbia College. I'm from a small oh, town. Wow. I'm from a small town called uh, Decatur, Illinois. Okay. Um, so when I turned 18, um, I got accepted to Columbia College, went there for four years. Um, my freshman year, I got an internship at a music production company who specialized in jingles um, by the name of Dupay Productions and was there for 13, 14 years. And I'm still affiliated with them as well. But um yeah, man. Um, I feel like I'm talking too much, or maybe I'm not answering the no, question. No, no. This it's is great. Long, it's been a journey. <laughs> but yeah. that's where I got my start, though, yeah. Wow. So you've been doing music for just over 20 yeah. years. Yeah, I've been I over, t I'm trying to think. I'm not going to say my age. But um, <laughs> yeah, I would say definitely 20 years plus I have been performing and making music. Wow. So, it's been a, a, a beautiful ride and a beautiful journey, man. Mm -hmm. And what I think it's safe to say, like you primarily do R&B right now, right? Yeah, that's like my my main genre. Um, I like to consider it alternative R&B. And the reason mm -hmm. why I consider it alternative R&B is because I, I believe with the, um, you know, um, the TC Helicon Voice Live Touch 2, it kind of gives it an unconventional approach when you add the looping into like an R&B performance. It's kind of like you get this inside of like how music is, is being created. So anytime like any, any genre that's like progressive or like, you know, bending some of the boundaries, I always believe is alternative. So I, 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 mm -hmm. tec I, tec I technically consider myself an alternative R&B artist. Um, but I, I do all yeah. other genres as well, but that's my thing. Yeah. Yeah. And what got you started with the looping specifically? Was that something you did back when you had the CD burner? Or? That's a great question, man. So it's funny, man. Um, I always felt like I was looping ever since I was a kid because I would have all these different ideas in my head and I would like make it in my head. And at that time, you know, I knew music theory as a kid, but I didn't really know how to like work around the keyboard that well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, what got me into looping was really Reggie Watts. Uh, I saw this uh netflix documentary or his like stand-up show and i was like this is amazing <laughs> like this yeah. is not only amazing but it's a show it's creative it's on the spot it's challenging it's in, you know it's unique it's unconventional it's progressive and i was like you know what i want to add this into r&b because i believe that 
um, when when people think about R and B, just generally, it's like this like baby making music. Now, when you say soul music, people think of like Stevie Wonder and like um, you know Hathaway and like all these great soulful artists. Um, but nine times out of ten, when someone says R and B, they don't necessarily think like they might think of Usher. And if yeah. you think of Usher, you think of like a sex symbol. And um, even though like you know I don't mind you know being that artist as well. I, the, the, cre the, the creativity part is a huge part of me. And so with, with R and B, I wanted to make more creative R and B. And that's why mm -hmm. I purchased the voice life touch too. So I can extend my creative ideas. Cause I feel like I was pretty limited with, 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 with how I was working around. And this mm -hmm. allows me to get my um, ideas out more fluidly and more creatively. So, yeah. Awesome. And how do you use the voice life touch Two to do that? Are you, cause I know you use logic, right? Oh, yeah, I got it. So are you looping in logic or with the touch two or like a mix of both? What's the process there? Right. So um, I use for, 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 for the looping live, I use main stage actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Really main stage is just a way for me to trigger my sounds because for the longest time doing, I have actually videos on, on YouTube. People probably won't notice as much, but they're like when I first started looping, I was like doing it live in the logic session but there's always like this small like latency when you go to the next track because I was literally just hitting the- um, Like the down arrow type of thing? <laughs> yes, I was hitting the down arrow to go to the next instrument. Oh, wow. and, I, and I remember when I was looping live, I would have to, um, I would have to tap my, um, my keyboard first but, so I can, to, uh, to wake up the sound, to even, to even execute the sound. So I was like, oh. I got to move around this. And so my mentor at the time was like, dude, have you heard of main stage? You should just use main stage. Just, that's what it's for. It's for like, you know, live performances. Mm -hmm. so I learned main stage, learn how to uh, operate that. And um, yeah, so I'm, um, when I do loop, I use uh, main stage with voice live touch two. And then I have my uh, M audio MIDI controller and I'm a, I'm, I'm a big standalone synth guy. I do plan yeah. to like buy more analog, like um, I'm sorry, but buy more, buy more standalone, um, yeah, yes, but right now I just use all this the software sense um, yeah. from loans. So yeah, and you can get a lot done with with main stages built in stuff. It's pretty flexible. Amazing, man. Yeah. Love. What type of stuff are you doing on the Voice Life Touch Two? Um, on the Voice Life Touch Two, the main thing that I'm uh, exploring is really like the vocal design, um, mm. harmony. Like for an example, the. I always use that. I like to, um, sometimes I, when I, I, I had this song called uh, Just Like You Told Me that's on a Spotify and I like make this like um, gu guitar sound like. So that's the other way that I use it. Um, um, I definitely use like the, the, the tuning, but something, but, but sometimes with the tuning, I feel like it limits me when I'm singing because there's so much tuning that I can't actually hear myself. Yeah. So lately, so lately I've been kind of like taking the, the tuning off and just like working on making sure I'm, I'm more pitch correct, pitch accurate. I, yeah. I like, I might, I might tune it to like 50%, but not a hundred anymore. Cause it kind of just throws me off. Oh. Um, and then also I use the, the looping aspects of it, mm -hmm. which took me about two to three years to like really get a, um, a hold of, but uh, yeah, dude. So I use it as a vocal designer. Um, I use it as a, a looping device. I also use it, man, to record my voiceovers as an actor. Oh, so I just, wow. Yeah, I just had a script yesterday um, uh, for a company, and I love my voice life touch too because that's what I use it for. So yeah, it's I, I use it for a lot of different um, reasons and for uh, uh, different uses. So. Yeah. Mm. And does it act as like your interface too when you're like outputting the main stage sounds? Uh, yes, um, it does. It does. Yep. Yeah, it, it acts as my, my output device as well. So Dude, that's sweet. And then, but however though, like when I, when I do loop, I'm looping from in the, the aux, the aux yeah. channel, because uh, I'm, I'm pulling from those, those synths that are in my, my main stage, which were kind of like in my logic. That's awesome. And for those, for those watching, like, You've got to check out Taylor's looping stuff. I was watching the other day your So Far Sounds performance from a few years back where you did uh, 
for sale by Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think you were using logic there probably because that's like yeah. an older one, but it was still like, it was tight. It was great. The way like you, you have a really great performing presence and that comes out a lot in your, uh, your Instagram content. Do you think, do you think your performance is influenced by the other areas where you express yourself artistically like acting and that's a great question. You are absolutely right. And um, just to make a, a, a statement here, I don't consider myself and I don't, I, I would recommend any artist to never consider themselves a one dimensional artist. And that mm -hmm. is for the reason why is because I just believe that, um, you know, as a, a performing artist, if you can perform musically, there's other talents that you might have too. And that's why I, I access that into my acting and acting is, is more like a secondary. It's not my primary, mm -hmm. uh, like focus of like occupation of like what I want to do for the rest of my life. But it is a huge part of me because I've been acting since I was like 16. Um, and I, I have noticed that, you know, because of the live performances that I've done as like as a kid or even when I loop now, it all just, they're not like mutually exclusive. They all work together. Yeah. So that's a great question because I am a live performer. It definitely translates into all the other creative aspects too. Like even the cooking, you know, it's just, yeah. Man, I love that. And you, that's very well articulated, I imagine, because you, you share that type of thing, because you're a teacher, right? Like you mentor people who are growing in their art. Yeah, man. Um, I actually, for the first, like this year was my first time teaching full time. I've, I've done like workshops. I've done like, you know, three or four months or six month co commitments. But this is my first time being a full fledged um, educator. So currently right now, um, I am a high school uh, teacher at the Chi Arts, the Chicago High School of Arts in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's actually the first uh, public art school in Chicago. And um, I teach a music business philosophy and ethics class. Uh, they are called professional development for a uh, vocalist. And essentially like, you know, I'm teaching them how to publish their music. I'm teaching them um, about the essentials of being an artist. Like why, like, why do you sing? Like, why are you an mm -hmm. artist? And, um, teach them about marketing, about, you know, demographics, how to put yourself out there. Currently right now with, you know, with the pandemic that's going on, I'm teaching um, financials, uh, contracts, and social media. I'm kind of like putting all that in into one bowl. So I really love educating. And the, 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 the great thing about that school is that like, I feel like I'm in like my arts college again, because every student there is super artsy. And that's how we were mm -hmm. at Columbia. I mean, just super artsy kids being progressive and just like, you know, just trying to like, you know, go for the, go for the most unique sound and the most unique, you know, art that we could, you know, create and paint. So, um, okay. and then also I'm a director and teacher at um, School of Rock. And um, currently right now I have a 25, I'm sorry, 24 student rock ensemble that I direct. And then I teach uh, private vocal lessons. So that's what I do uh, throughout the week. And then on the weekends, um, I'm a gigging artist as well. So I do a lot of like corporate casino wedding gigs too. So wow. Big music education and acting is like all full time. Yeah. It's pretty go, go, go. Is it nice? Is it, is it almost like a rest not having as much, stuff going on the last little while or is that a strain man do you are like are you in here man <laughs> hold on let me turn on the on the reverb i i i now i, I, I think this is more like yeah do i feel like you're in, in my space so in our area, um, <laughs> i was just talking to my friends um about that you know i for the longest for maybe for the past eight months have just been going on like just going just been on go like hmm. seriously and I, um, even though I, it's unfortunate of what's going on, I do think that this is a time for everyone just to, you know, recalibrate, um, get back to self-care and really get into the root of why we're doing things. And so, yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because I needed this rest and uh, I'm, I'm glad that I'm taking it. At the same time, I'm not sitting down, just not doing anything. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it is a great opportunity just to um, fine tune anything that you have going on in your life right now. So I'm, I'm very fortunate for the, I'm, I'm very fortunate to still be able to make money as an educator. And I'm fortunate currently right now just to get the, the space to, have, to, to rest. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's so, and that's the thing with being, like a musician or any type of artist is it's just like when it rains, it pours and sometimes it'll just go for months or years and there's no end in sight. So 
Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you're I'm glad you're getting that rest. Um, so, uh, you've got a bunch of music out, um, on Spotify. You've just been releasing some new music on your Instagram and, uh, is there stuff on, uh, Bandcamp or is it just the Spotify releases? I never, I never got into the, the, uh, the, ba- you know, I think I post, no, I was into Reverb Nation years ago. But I think I'm going to start putting my music on Bandcamp. And I, I really appreciate Bandcamp for what they did a couple of weeks ago about, you know, giving 100% of the revenue to the artists. I mean, that's just a way yeah. to pay back to what's going on right now. But I think that I am going to start utilizing Bandcamp because one thing what I, I like about Bandcamp is that, you know, you can sell your music and it's like this, I don't know, it's just like a different community there. You know, it's like if you don't want to put your stuff out on Spotify or those other channels, this is just another way for you to monetize your creativity um, as a as a recording artist so I have not put it on Bandcamp but I do have music on SoundCloud and all the other major streaming uh, platforms so um, currently right now on streaming platforms I have uh, my last album which is called Take Control which is that is essentially like a straight ahead R&B album um, and then prior to that I had uh, an album called Taylor Made which is uh, on SoundCloud and then I have like singles um as mm. well currently right now what i've been doing i've been doing this like song challenge 52 week song challenge and i just started this today um where you know i, I allow uh, my fans or you know supporters to rate the song and what i'm going to start doing now is that like it's not I, I used to do like this gliding scale where it's like well if it's hot is it is it right here or right here and now i'm just doing is it hot or is it not <laughs> because it's oh. like I learned, I learned, I learned from my mentor and, um, you know, that, you know, if, if someone is on the fence of your song, that's not a good thing. It's just like, it's, yeah. it's better for them to like either not like it or like it. And so my, my goal is to like get at least a 90% rate. And if, if I get a 90% rate, then I'll release it. So the supporters can, um, can download it. So, yeah, that's sweet. And you've, so you're going to have 52 finished songs when you're through this. 52 finished songs. Now, a lot of these songs are like one minute. Um, but, um, but this is like another thing that I'm, I'm kind of like, well, I didn't start this. It's actually an artist by the name of Tierra Whack. Do you know who that is? No. He's awesome. Uh-huh. You should check. Like, after we get done this interview, you should go to uh, YouTube and just type in Tierra Whack, um, Whack World. And it's a 17 minute clip of her. Uh, she pretty much did 17 one minute videos and she put the one minute songs on Spotify. So that, so the whole album is only 17 minutes, but it's really cool because she paired it with this YouTube video. And so each, she has a video for each song, but it's a minute. And so that made me think like, okay, well, we live in this world now where it's like the attention span is so small. I could write this full song, four or five minute song and put it out every single week, but who's really <laughs> going to sit there and go through a four or five minute song when you have like ads coming your way, you have your friends, you know, wedding pics. So do you have like these party yeah. pics? Do you got the Corona, you know? Yeah. So the, the idea is to still create a song and it still is a song because there's a verse, there's a chorus and there's mm-hmm. another chorus. Um, but the, for, for me to, to fill out the song, it's like, if there's like a demand and like some of the songs that I put out have been like a demand, like old me that's on Spotify right now is yeah. one of um, it's one of my uh, song challenge songs. And so people were like, dude, put it out. So that's just what I'm going to be doing. It's like, you know, just to manage my time and just manage expectations. If I see a demand, then I'll put it out. So, yeah. And, and what's the, I've, I've been loving old me, but it sounds very like produced compared to the looping stuff. So I'm curious, what's your process for taking a song from the written idea phase to the ready to release? Great question, man. That's funny, man. Yeah, you did do. You're great at this. Uh, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. Great question. With with old me, and I I, I just want to make a point here. Um, with all the music that I've been putting out, do I don't have this big studio? Like um, currently, right now, I'm I'm kind of like taking a break, um, just from you know from things, and I'm just 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 staying at at, at home outside of the pandemic and just you know self producing. But dude. Mm-hmm. With see right now is all I use this is this is all I use is this and sense and so with old me I think that what made it sound more producers because I actually had musicians and so Uh, um, okay you know um of course I created all the um the melodies and the um you know the beef of the song but you know I had Mm -hmm. a 
artists like Bud Way Fairs, who's a great bassist, who's played on at least six or seven of my uh, song channel songs. Um, I've had a, a drummer by the name of Jeff Maley, who's actually in my band, uh, my gigging band, and Bowie's in my gigging band, too. And then when I met Bowie, he introduced me to his friends, uh, Matt Engelson, and then um, uh, Dylan uh, Musso. And so he, was, he played trombone, Dylan did, and then uh, Matt, he played the trumpet. And he also helped me to uh, mix and uh, do some, like, pre-mastering and mastering. And then I had another guy who I work with at School of Rock uh, finish out the mastering by the name of uh, uh, Rafe uh, Bradford. So, um, but as far as just answer your question about producing, and I, I want to make a note here, that, I mean, that is what a producer does. It's not so much, it's not just making the beat, it's like curating it, you know, coming up with the different sounds, like, you know, maybe mixing it, maybe, you know, tuning the drums. Like I like to tune my drums to the key of yeah. the song and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, this is a like this song challenge is more than just for like vanity purposes. It's just another educational way for me to just up my game as a producer and as a writer and it's just the overall artist. So, but yeah, great question, man. I, um, with, with old me, the reason why it's produced well is because I think it's just a mesh of, you know, the knowledge that I have of mixing, the knowledge I, I have of like, you know, musicianship and just like honestly the camaraderie with the musicians do. It's all about a vibe. It, and if, if the vibe is not mm -hmm. there get the magic and i'm learning that so yeah and on that on that track did you get in a room with them and like work it out or did you send them the stuff and they sent you back parts how did that look yeah dude that's another thing about the, the this life that we live now and in, in this new technology world do nothing we all did everything in the comfort of our home it's like the videos and I, I i've been getting a lot of um uh, you know, messages to Bali, like, man, dude, are you really recording that live? Do every single like song challenge you've seen is recorded live. It, it, it doesn't look like it is because it's so like produced in a sense, but it's, it's recorded live. So yeah, dude, I'm, I, I, I did all that in the comfort of my homes. The musicians did it in the comfort of their homes. And then we just all put it together. So we were not, we weren't in any big studio. We weren't like, you know, no, we just did it at the comfort of our homes. Now, I, I, I do want to say that, like, I'm not trying to dismiss any, like, major studio because there's definitely mm -hmm. a lot of pluses and benefits to having um, a great studio. But I think the point that I'm trying to make is it's more about the creativity, the knowledge of uh, musicianship, and just how, how well can you work around and be creative. And I think that that's what producing and that's how you get great records. It's not necessarily a studio. It's really about what's in here. So Totally. And that's such a trap that especially young musicians fall into where they're like, I need to have the gear. I need to have like the best stuff. If I want to make something that's good, we're really like, you need a laptop. You could even do stuff with your phone, right? Like there's, it's all about your creativity. Sky's the limit, man. Yeah. And, and that um, is a good segue to like, I know you're an educator and you've probably got like so many like wisdom bombs of, of insight. So like, what's a, what are some big pieces of advice you'd give to people who are starting out into music and maybe even more specifically who want to do the type of music you do where they're looping and like they have their own unique style? What, what advice would you give to young artists? Yeah. Another great question. Um, yeah. The, the, the first thing that I would uh, recommend for artists who are starting out who um, A, just want to get into music is just to learn basic music theory. Like what has really helped me and honestly how to really utilize the voice life touch to to the to the best way is to you have to have some idea of theory because a lot of people hit like the, the harmony and they just do the auto and it doesn't sound good. And if you if you know theory, you know, whatever song is in the key and you can go to the voice life touch Two and put it in the key of the song. And what I love about the voice life touch Two, you can even change the way that the harmony sounds. And if you don't have an idea of like what pitch, you know, tone, um, you know, color of a sound or theory when you get this box, it'll, it'll be really cool because you're making all these cool sounds, but when you perform it, it may not be at the best. So like my, 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 just right off the bat, like when we're just talking about looping, it definitely has a lot of connection to like music theory and rhythm, especially when you have a metronome and playing to a kick, um, a click track in a live setting. Oh my gosh, it's so nerve wracking because at yeah. any point, dude, it can go wrong. But if you are a skilled musician and you know rhythm and you know how to like move around, it's, it, it's easier for, um, it's just much easier for you to, to, to utilize it. And so that's the first thing. And the second yeah. thing is just to be creative and, and unique. And I see we only have like five minutes left, so I, I, I try to keep this short. Um, but um, yeah, it's just to be unique, be creative, and just take the time to like really know theory. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it's that foundation that really 
like makes you able to do stuff. And the thing with looping, like when it's good, it's great. But then when it's just a little off, like you miss that downbeat and it's so awkward. And yeah, man. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Like, I know you're releasing new music, you're doing the song challenge. What type of stuff do you want people to know about that you're, you're involved in right now? Yeah. Well, um, first and foremost is the, is the song challenge, uh, doing a 52 week song challenge, a song a week. And I, I will admit that it hasn't been a song each week. I have been writing a song uh, each week, but as far as with the videos, like if you look at the timeline, I may have not done it every single week, but I've been mm -hmm. writing, literally writing a song every single week. Um, so I'm just plugging that. Um, I'm also just plugging like the new single. I just released old me, which is on a Spotify. You can listen to, uh, my last album, Take Control, on Spotify. I will be um, coming up with some new merch real soon. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's connected to the song challenge. That's connected to um, the cooking show that I have. I have a cooking show online. It's called Music Burger TV. And it's literally me just uh, putting food and music all under one bun. That's what I call it, Music Burger. Oh. And um, I, I actually had that show 10 years ago, but I stopped doing it because I had this VJ contract, this uh, video jockey contract, and they told me I couldn't do my own show. So, um, but now I'm doing it again. So plug in that. And just to stay tuned, um, like I said, we're going through some really rough times right now in the world. Um, but the beautiful thing is like artists like myself and artists all over the car, um, all over the world, we, we have music to give, we have energy to give out. And I think it's just a perfect time just to shed some light into the world with a, a good song. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. And we'll have links for Taylor's socials and his music. I'm also going to put a link for the, the Chicago high school for the arts in the description. Cause I think that's just such a cool institution and people should be supporting that. So yeah, they can donate to the, um, uh, to that school too, because that school is a hundred percent donated through like, you know, uh, donors and like, you know, uh, those who have, um, wealth and, you know, for education and have a, a special, uh, appreciation for education for, for inner city kids so you can go to that site i think it's just shyarts.org and you can donate as well so yeah man and i i want to thank you once again robbie and i want to thank uh tc helicon uh just want to put this out here if, if I, I know we're going through rough times but i would love to be a, an ambassador i would love to get you know any new tc helicon equipment i would do cool tutorial videos anything man i'm like i'm such a fan and i just i'm, I'm so appreciative of uh the uh the support that i've gotten from you guys seriously so yeah thanks man yeah we love again we just love everything you're doing um and yeah i like the i like the support idea i'll send you an email love um you. sweet man thanks so much all right man robbie you take care and uh if you need anything else man just let me know oh will do oh, on that end you have a good day and i'll see you later if you need anything from me you know you have my email we could do this again or if you want to we could just do it at another time it's completely fine with me <laughs>